As the old saying goes, or as you've seen from our examples, having the right tool for the job can make all the difference in the world. And the same thing is true in racing. Picking the right wheel rim for the discipline or the type of racing that you're doing can make all the difference in the world there as well. So for example, if I'm in a high-tech LMP2 car, I just feel at home using a butterfly or formula style rim, and it's the same thing that the professional use as well. On the other hand, when I'm in the oval world, in the NASCAR circuit, I just feel at home using a big giant round rim, and again, it's what the pros use there. And the type of driving that you do is probably the first reason you would select one wheel rim style over another, but there are other reasons that we'll cover throughout this review. So today we are here to check out the Moza Racing KS Wheel Rim. This is a new rim for Moza and is part of their ecosystem. The KS Rim goes for $279 and it is packed full of features. So that lower price point of $279, which I feel is relatively low, is probably a second reason that somebody might pick one wheel rim over another, that being cost. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at the KS Racing wheel rim and we'll talk about some of its features while we have our hands on it playing with it. So go ahead and come in close. No, 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 I mean come in really close because I want you to see exactly what I see here. This wheel rim at first totally had me for real carbon fiber. It totally looks like it and it's the style of rim that you would almost expect it except for at $279, they can't build this thing out of carbon fiber. So what is it? It is carbon fiber reinforced polycarbonate, AKA super duper strong plastic. So the look, the carbon fiber look is actually embedded or molded into the wheel rim. So that's really nice and it does give it a good finish. So while we are talking about finish, let's talk about the seam. It is a two part rim. So you've got a back cover and a front cover with a seam right down the middle that you can see. And across the top here, I can feel it a little bit. The overall shape, is that low profile, no display raising the top. It's a low center. You're gonna have good visual clearance over the top of this wheel rim for those who have their wheels semi obstructing their view. Other visual things, it's no longer that rev bar of the Mozo rims. It's back to a rev LED strip like you see on most rims out there. So that one, two, three, four LEDs that light up and you can change the colors of those LEDs within the pit house software which is a great feature as well. The KS wheel rim is 300 millimeters which is almost 12 inches wide and it features injected molded TPE rubber grips which I've really started to love because of the way they feel in my hands. They're very soft. So let's talk about some of its mappable functions and features. Most prominent, you see these white buttons. They're white now because the power's off, but if it was plugged in, these are backlit buttons and they are programmable in their color, which is a great feature as well. The top four have a very small shield protecting them from accidental presses. And the bottom one has a very large covering. So it's easy to identify maybe without looking down. Now, when it comes to the click of these buttons, they have a great audible and tactile feel. It's a good feeling click. It takes a lot of tension. You're not gonna accidentally do it. You're gonna know, what, even if you have loud headphones, you're gonna feel that click when it happens, which is a good feature as well. Directly above each thumb placement, we have this left and right dial. And again, it has a good detent. You can feel that. The left one's marked for brake bias, BB, and the right one is matched for differential, which I don't think I've ever mapped. So I'll probably put a sticker over that or map it for something else, but very highly functional, good placement, and a good feel. You've got two mini joysticks, one on each side. That would be up, down, left, right. They're mini joysticks. So there's not a lot of great feel in them, but they do add functionality to the wheel rim. The other noticeable thing on the front are the three rotary dials. In the software, the pit house software, you can map this to be positional or just left and right. And you got these marked for turbo, traction control, and ABS. They've got a nice sticker on the back showing you the position of the dial. And they have a good feel as well, good detent that you can even again hear and feel and see the clicks between each position. All right, let's flip it over around to the back and talk about the backside. 
most prominent, the NRG style Moza all aluminum or all metal, mostly aluminum, all metal 10 bearing quick release system. I love this part of their ecosystem. It's a good, strong fit. We've tested this on a lot of rims and a lot of bases. Inside of that, you can see the 10 pin, actually, I don't know how many pins it is. I think it's about 11 pins of the ecosystem of the Moza wireless connectivity. You've got magnetic paddle shifters. But these are a little different than some of the other Moza or other most wheels that I've tested. You don't have a huge tactile click. You don't hear that metal on metal click. It's not super echoey and super strong. They did something to mute this click. And I think some drivers are actually going to be disappointed because they really like that strong sound and feel of a big magnetic pull. And other drivers are going to like that it's a little more muted because it's plenty of feeling just not quite as noisy and they move about a quarter of an inch when you pull on them. Directly below those, you have the two clutch paddles and these can be used as split axis. So that's great for using it as a clutch or I might even map it as look left, look right, but adding functionality to the wheel rim. On the bottom, we have the RJ45 jack. So yes, through this quick release with those pins on a Moza base, it's wireless. But if you want to use this on any wheelbase out there in the world, as long as you have an NRG style quick release on the base and you have the Moza hub plugged in, it would then be a wire connection, but you could put this on any wheelbase out there. The last thing we really haven't talked about is our the rubber grips. So these are an over molded style grip, which are, they're not so hard that they're uncomfortable. They're actually very soft and comfortable in your hands, but they're not so soft that they're squeezy. They're not so soft that they feel like they're going to get like clotted or start coming apart. They should last very long time and they have an ergonomic feel, which feels good in my hands. And we'll talk more about their shape and comfort when we get down to driving. So I think the next thing to do would be getting this onto our sim rig and telling you what it feels like and how it operates out on track. Let's go ahead and talk about what it's like driving with the KS racing wheel. And it really starts with the quick release. And I've talked about how much I do love this NRG style quick release, the 10 bearings, all metal. It is strong. It's easy to operate. It's kind of fun to operate as well. So very quick, quick release, easy and strong. And a little surprising to see this nice of a version of it on a $279. Also, and I think that's another reason someone might pick one wheel rim over another. The quick release alone, the quick release system, when you're talking about an ecosystem and picking the right tool for the job, and maybe you need your round wheel, maybe you need your butterfly, but being able to put either one on as part of that ecosystem is definitely a reason why someone would pick one uh, rim over another rim. Now, we've talked about the construction and its polycarbonate body. This feels strong. So when I twist on it, when I really do the G.I. Joe Kung Fu grip and twisty on it, there is a little teeny, I mean, I don't even know if you can see it. I think I can feel just a hint of it, but it certainly feels strong and resistant against that level of pressure. I do know it's plastic. I can hear the hollowness inside, especially down here on the corner. And with that said, I don't think I would want to drop or throw this wheel on the ground in anger or frustration because I'm pretty sure it's not built or strong enough for that level of abuse. But at $279, I think it's more than adequate for sim racing. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull out on track and we'll start talking about other things like the comfort. So you've got these TPE rubber grips. And they, I like the feeling. There's something that is very smooth feeling about it and soft. And yet at the same time, they're not squishy. So when I think rubber, I think squishy. And in this case, they're not. They, they barely, I mean, and you can see me sticking my thumb in. They barely move, but they're not hard. They feel soft in your hand. The other thing I like about these grips, and, and it, it's kind of counterintuitive. I would think that rubber grips would make me sweat more than other types of grips. And that actually isn't the case for me. Now, for other people, that might be the case. And that's why you'll find some people do wear gloves when racing. So we can talk about the comfort of the rubber grip. So let's talk about the ergonomics and the actual comfort. All right. So in a glove, it changes everything because the glove is a little bit of a cushion on its own. But I have plenty of room in these hand holes for use with a glove. So that's really good, whether you're going gloves or barehanded. 
the, the wheel itself is a little bit longer and skinnier and narrow. So you've got sort of that flat edge on the palm of your hand, which allows me to get a really good grip on the wheel without having to do the G.I. Joe Kung Fu grip, which is also really nice and it helps with fatigue so you don't wear out quite as fast. And another reason I think that you might choose this style wheel rim, I think it le leads to a little less fatigue if you're not moving your hands around a whole lot. When I remove the glove and I'm barehanded, this front edge is a little bit no more noticeable with the bare hand. So it does, I'm not gonna call it sharp, it's not a sharp edge. But you can definitely feel it and it's a different shape than a lot of other rims that I've used but again comfortable in my hand. This ergonomic stripe here really forces my hand in here and once I'm here though I have a really good comfort. There's no reason to move my hands around. I can drive like this for hours in total comfort and uh, with, with surprisingly little sweat as well. Oh. The other reason you're, we love a butterfly wheel is we're here, our hands don't move, we're not doing that hand over hand. It's the, the other part is the accessibility of the buttons. And this is another area I think that some people would pick one rim over another, is how many buttons can they activate while in this position? So what I wanna do is activate the buttons on this rim without having to pivot or lift my palm of my hand off the wheel to do so. So on this wheel rim, what we have are one, two, three buttons. Right there, you can see me. One, two, three on both sides, and I'm not lifting my palms off the, the wheel at all. I can fully access those three comfortably, engage all three buttons while doing anything at full precision, full grip on the wheel. The fourth wheel button's down, I do have to lift just a little bit. My thumb can't quite reach them, and therefore I'm having to pull my hand off a little bit. So that gives me three across the top on each side. I can also access both of these rotary dials, one on each side with my thumbs without any pivot as, as well. So it gives me at least five commands per hand without removing. Obviously I have two more buttons and the thumbsticks and the three rotaries that I can all operate, but I will have to lift a hand off the wheel to use them, making them a little less accessible. So that's the function of the layout of the KS wheel rim. With that, the quality of the buttons. I talked about this when we were, when we were looking at the wheel close up. For $279, I'm really shocked and surprised at the quality of the button. Same thing on the detents on these rotaries. They're a little hard to find until you know the rim well. They don't stick out very much. But once you know where they are and you get them, it's very easy to operate them left and right. Uh, the rotary dials also have a good intent, indent. So when I'm reaching my hand off the wheel at speed and trying to do a quick adjustment, it's very easy to get one click on each of these. I'm not getting three by accident, but I can turn it twice if I need to. If I'm trying to get a big adjustment on brake bias there, we can do that. So feels real good, high quality knobs there as well. The paddle shifters, they are magnetic. I don't even consider that a pro or an upgrade. That's the, become the industry standard. Almost every wheel I test now comes with magnetic shifters. However, these are a little unique. They are a little muted. Whoops, not when you flick them like that. You'll hear there's a rubber, a rubber bumper inside that is preventing that clack of the metal on metal that most magnetic shifters have nowadays. So they're a little unique. Some drivers like that noise, like that extra feedback of that clack noise that makes a magnetic paddle shifter so distinct. And other people like a little bit more of a muted feel and are gonna actually really like the way these are kind of a more gentle approach. Uh, but it would almost fool you to think that they're not magnetic except for they just do that quick release, 100% release the minute you've engaged the shifter. They move about a quarter of an inch of travel while being moved. The lower clutch paddles, they move about three eighths of an inch. There is no button, it is just spring resistance and they have a, a, a decent amount of spring pressure. I would call them medium. You can operate them with your pinkies, no problem. And at the same time, there's enough tension that you're not just gonna go to full throw the minute you put your finger on it because they do resist you just a little bit. Overall, it is a robust wheel. Overall, it is a comfortable wheel. Overall, I like the, the extra visibility over the top because it's a low profile without that dash. And that makes it a, a nice wheel for a lot of sim setups where you have it obstructing your monitors, perhaps. Very little obstruction when I'm driving this wheel rim. And at 300 millimeters, I think it feels about right for 
the type of driving that I would be doing with it. So overall, I'm very impressed for $279. It's a, a surprisingly good wheel. I didn't even talk about the rev strip and being able to change that to match whether it's the car you're driving or to match the color scheme that you've built on your wheel. Uh, you know, building a whole color scheme would be a whole other reason someone would pick one wheel rim over another. So these are all add up to be a, a, a very, very nice wheel rim for $279. One thing I didn't talk a whole lot about in the driving portion was the programmable backlit buttons because that does make a big difference for me. Number one, this wheel came with no stickers on the buttons. So it actually came with the same sticker sheet and I was able to put the exact button. So I have this one C for chat. I have that one for next because it scrolls through the menus. I was able to put a bias here because I'm using this as a bias knob. And when you multiply the stickers identifying like plus and minus adding or subtracting air pressure from the tires, for example, really enhances the overall effect of the wheel. So whether you're using it like I have it here where it's functional, where I wanted to know that everything over here in blue was about moving things and controlling my menus, this is my delta. I know that red is warning, it's toe and pit lane, pit limiter. I know that green is how I talk to others and yellow is flash my light. So it's the color coordination for me is really good. But for a lot of people, and I've talked about this throughout the review, having a wheel that looks a certain look. I have my blue lighting. So if I wanna make this wheel all blue, for example, I can just put it into programming mode and I'll, I'll make this side match the other side on the top and this will really nicely match the lighting of my room. And I can even go into the software and change the LEDs to match the wheel. So if I really want to take it to that next level, we just go to the wheel rim and we just change these to all blue. And then when we get in the car and rev, you can see even our rev bar is now matching the color scheme of our wheel. And I could do that to match any of the programmable colors and make it match the decor of my room or my sim rig, which is just another great feature of this rim and, and a lot of the other Moza rims. And a few other companies are doing backlit buttons like this. And it's sort of that next level thing that we're seeing. First, it was magnetic pick paddles that became the industry standard and now we're seeing backlit buttons becoming the industry standard and it just adds to the overall appeal that is going to make you pick one wheel over another. Well I think we've covered just about everything that I want to cover when it comes to talking about the KS racing wheel. I think I've told you why you might pick this wheel rim over other options out there. We've talked about picking the right tool for the job because it just makes your sim racing life that much better or gets you that much more performance out on track. But I want to make it perfectly clear so you can really tell how this sizes up against its competition. And the best way to do that, of course, is with the good, the not so good, and the bottom line. Starting off with the good, and that being, it is a very well-priced wheel rim. Good looking wheel. Very light wheel. Feels like very high-end parts, buttons, dials. 30 mappable functions, plus paddles. Programmable backlight colors of buttons. Customizable LED light rev strip. Comfortable wheel. Magnetic paddle shifters. Quiet. Bonus clutch paddles. Wireless. No wraparound cable. No longer entirely proprietary. USB direct via the Moza hub. Now on to the not so good. And I really only have one item that I could put on this list and that is that hollow sound. It is extremely lightweight but that polycarbonate carbon fiber reinforced polycarbonate case but it gives it that hollow effect and and it does make me question its strength if you dropped it on a hard floor other than that it is quite strong. So that does take me to the bottom line. I mean something else that I could add to this list is I feel a lot of people out there might see this rim and think, oh, that's a perfect rim for me, but I'm not part of their ecosystem. And that's gonna be a big bummer because 
For $279, I can't think of a much better wheel rim out there. It's very comparable to the McLaren rim, the McLaren 650 rim from Fanatic, which is $199 with their inexpensive quick release add. Their good quick release, it jumps it to $300. But they are very similar wheels, and I can see how Moza is definitely attacking Fanatic or going after that market. And you can see a lot of similarity between their products. What I do love about this wheel, though, is if you were to combine this with like an R9 base at $399. You could buy the RS wheel rim, which is another $499, and still buy this for $279. That gives you the total of, I believe, $1117, and it would give you both your round wheel for your NASCAR applications, as well as your butterfly, a high-end butterfly wheel. So that's a lot of wheel options, a very, very high performance pro kit for somebody who does a little of every kind of racing. And I think that is one of the real reasons that this particular wheel rim fits so well into the Moza lineup. Comes in a lot less expensive than the other formula style rims, but there's not a whole lot of compromise. And I think that's a, a great thing for Moza. Again, I'm, I'm very blown away by the quality of this wheel for that $279 price tag. So again, we've talked a lot about the reasons you would pick one wheel rim over another wheel rim when you're really considering a, a formula or butterfly style. It could be the color combination because you just think it looks cool. It could be the materials that it's made out of. It could be the price point that it comes in. It could be the quick release or the ecosystem that it's a part of. But regardless, I think that they did a great job Moza did a great job with the KS racing wheel and it really rounds out the lineup of wheels that they have available for their base as well. You've got the high-end FSR with the built-in display and a much higher price tag. You've got the less expensive KS wheel that isn't even compromising that much. So I hope you've enjoyed our review of the KS racing wheel. Slightly different style to today's show and I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to give it a thumbs up if you did. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so you can find out when our next video comes out. And most of all, thank you for watching. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.